going through the numbers with you for the platinum service. Uh, now, I, I want to go over and address one thing that happened yesterday um, and that was asked. And this was asked before, um, you know, in the past. You have your numerator and your denominator in currencies. And uh, what that means is your front and back end. Now, on a one-to-one -one basis, generally, you know, without their own fluctuations in price, um, they are, you know, uh, equal to. They are an equal sum value. Basically, what you lose in, in dollars, you gain in Bitcoin and vice versa when you get price fluctuations. And that's something that people don't really get because it's, you have to think in a, in a dual, you know, instead of a singular point of view, you have to think in a duality, uh, basically. Or if you go beyond that, you know, um, fund managers, for example, have to think in a multiverse of, uh, you know, correlated values or even uncorrelated values. So it does become a bit um, complicated when you, especially when you average trades. When I average trades, what I want really is frequency. And this is the way all active fund managers trade, not non-active. Um, an active fund manager will go over and enter and exit individual positions, always with the ideal to seek a profit for their overall cumulative return of what you will get. So that will rise over time. And if we look at the calls, and I don't know why it puts in canceled, uh, that, you know, I have to go over and, you know, if I close a position by canceling, um, it should still count in return or in positive or negative unless it was equal to. Um, so we'll see about that in the future. But anyway, um, you know, you're going to see when I close individual trades, they're going to come back as a percentage. And they should because that's going to show what you gained or lost um, with the trades. And you can see that the tra what I'm doing is I'm closing each one out in profit, you know, 5% here, seven and a half or 10% there. And they're individually closed out by their profit basis. Um, and you can see that there. So, and that happens on both the short, which is the BitMEX and the long side. Now, conversely, I can use these in different ways, but you get the general idea. Um, all I have to do is move these positions um, and repeat over and over, and it grows the account. And uh, what you might not get in dollar amounts, you're getting in, in BTC. So it, it offsets. You don't have to worry about that. But think of each individual trade on an individual basis, please, because if you don't, it becomes complicated and um, you think you're losing, but you're not. And because you come from an average, if my average is all the way down below and I'm closing trades from above, then yes, it's going to look to you as if it was a loss from your cumulative average. But it's really not. Um, and you're going to see more of this in the future. Now that we have the Coinbase account, I'm going to be exiting and entering positions and closing them and, and repeating this over and over. And as we thaw, I want you to think of this kind of like an iceberg. Um, we're thawing, uh, there's more freedom of movement. So you're going to see me making a lot more trades, um, like these little trades and so forth, and closing them in profit and going on to the next trade. And it's going to be hedged against one versus the other often, the long versus the, the short count. And all I need is frequency. And over time, once that happens, then you're going to see it'll start to scale and it'll start to grow more and more, and, and your amounts will... Um, you know, become, uh, you know, it'll, it'll just basically grow in, in short. So anyway, let's get to the charts and that's just to give you a, a basic summation of, you know, what the activity is that I do on a day to day basis. And you'll see this and you can go to the results page and, um, just watch how they accumulate over time. And I think you'll be uh, happy with that. And, uh, uh, all I need is for these manips and it, they become very irritating because they're they're basically getting in the way of my order flow and all I need to do is figure out what they do 
and I, I'm doing this statistically over time to uh, catch them instead of them catching me. And you'll see more of that in the future. But anyway, let's go to the charts. And, and one of the things I, I want to really be clear on is the MINIPS, the people that have been running these prices with these crazy spikes and odd numbers, um, they have created uh, ridiculous numbers that are very hard to trade because of the fact that there's no logic to them. Um, so what slowly happens over time is I have to readjust to their dynamic price action and think of ways to catch them before um, you know it, they catch me. Uh, which it's kind of, uh, how would you say, uh, uh, difficult to do because there's no logic to their numbers. They always go way over and way under. Now, the only thing that I can do is go over and calculate statistically how often they're doing this, at what points, and really fractalize the charts and to see where they're located and, and whatnot. And I could do that on a pretty good basis. You know, um, uh, you can see like entries I made down here, and then the exits and so forth, but there's no real, but look how high that went all the way up here. What? Crazy. But anyway, there's no real logic to what they're doing, and um, so I have to build that, that knowledge base over time to trade against them, because they control the marketplace. Let's be very clear. And um, I have to go over and play within their, their volume and their, their ability to manipulate the price. Now, that is not an easy thing. Um, I would rather more natural market flow and, and place, but unfortunately the volume has been reduced over the past year or so, ever since the, the first incline, because people lost their um, you know, enthusiasm for Bitcoin because of the fact that it's not going straight up. Now, if Bitcoin goes to you know, above 20,000, then you're gonna get the whole herd of people get back into the marketplace and then you'll get 10 times or 20 or some ridiculous amount. If I think about it in a traffic terms, it's probably about close to 30. I'd say about 28 calculated, about 28, 30 times the amount of people. So for every one that we have now, we would imagine 27 to uh, 30 of them pop up. So, you know, and that's because of the, the price alone. Uh, nobody wants to deal with a, something that is just flatlined or down. Uh, they want something that is growing and blowing up. And uh, that will happen at some point because that's just the nature of Bitcoin. But for now, we're caught in the, the you know, sideways to down action. And there are a few things dynamically that have to take place numbers-wise. And one of them is we have to get under this area that they traded right to the the tip of right down here and uh, uh, once we get under this and we could see where the uh, you know the tide goes out and you can see what the emperor is wearing is the only way I can put it um, to see how much manipulation they had because my overall summation and what I've calculated from what I've seen over the uh, the past year is that these guys went way short in this whole area this whole move over here that you see uh, was pure manipulation. They just pressed it to ridiculous numbers, but they went short. So they're gonna need to cover those shorts. Now they're gonna cover them close to this number down here and maybe even down to the 5,000 range down here. Let's get that line there to there. So let's draw a box. <laughs> So right down here is pretty key um, from support and resistance. Now, from a FIB standpoint, point, excuse me, uh, it's more uh, cognizant from the, this level on down from that 7200 area uh, that we just got real close to, but we didn't hit it. Now, there's a few dynamic rules uh, from the currency market. And I won't get into them because they're very nuanced and nobody's going to understand. So it's really about math. Um, there's hidden rules of mathematics that apply to charts that people don't know anything about. And that's what gives me a lot of my um, 
confidence, I guess you can say, that certain things will turn out. And it gives me the ability to say this to a very heightened degree. And, and usually I'm right, statistically, um, a, a wide percentage of the time. And, um, uh, you know, so the first thing that we're going to look for is that the move to under these levels. And uh, it could collapse short term very fast down to this level, just goes, whoosh, goes straight down, which would be good for us. Or conversely, um, there is also a short term statistic. And we're going to go into the short term. But you get my point. I want to reiterate that we have to get under here and we can go all the way down to there. Um, and that's still high probability. Uh, but short term, let's get back to the short term chart. Mathematically, there's a very good chance that from this entry point down here, this is why I closed this trade here to there, that would go all the way back up to around 90, 180, and 90, 80. In this area right here, likely this red line here is going to get spiked up all the way up to here. Continuation from this point upwards, kind of not likely. The higher uh, statistics point to continuation down. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. Uh, but it could just bounce around too. It maybe can get all the way up to here. There's a possibility that it gets all the way up to here. And there is even a statistic that I've accounted for that goes all the way back up to 11.2 to 11,800. And you would say, oh man, but if we go all the way back up to there, we're in a bull market and everything's going to take off. No, not the way it's likely to work. And it has to do with some really interesting mathematics and statistics. And it's not something anybody in this marketplace that knows anything about trading Bitcoin with their uh, indicators and um, silly little systems and, and whatnot would ever understand. But what I can tell you is that the overall likelihood is that we are going to get under this level here. And we're going to have to test down here. And it's just statistics. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just what happens most of the time in other markets. And now get this, that Bitcoin is a raw market. It's not an easy market to really, because of the, it doesn't have a lot of volume. There's not a lot of institutions running algorithms. So it's hard for me to trade because I'm used to trading against the institutions on the currency side, like for Forex, um, where I trade against their algorithms that I understand because I understand the math that they use. So it makes it easier for me to be able to predict and project when certain things are going to occur based on, on you know, hundreds or thousands of variables all coming together, correlating at one time. Um, not so easy in uh, Bitcoin because you have a small group of people uh, launching price and you get herd behavior. So they're leading the herd to go over and profit off of them. And, you know, and that's usually because of the uh, more lever leveraged environment where, you know, they're taking advantage like on BitMEX and in other places. And, and also because of the fact that you have multiple exchanges doing their own thing and their own pricing. So it's a... Uh, there's no cohesiveness, uh, so that makes it much more raw, much more, um, you get a greater deal of volatility and things that don't really make sense uh, from uh, somebody who would be coming from uh, trading Forex or stocks or something to those degrees, which, uh, you know, that's more of a controlled market, I guess you can call it, but that's the perspective there. But anyway, short term, what we're looking for here. And this is why I closed out this position here, is this point back to this point is high probability. And what I'm going to do is be building, and you're going to see me close and enter and exit positions. Uh, entered here, exited here, entry here, exit there, entry here, exit there, entry, entry, exit, exit, entry, entry, entry exit and on and on so you're going to see me rolling positions over entry 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 so you know each one of these being the red is the cell and these are your longs and you're going to see me repeat this over and over i'm going to become more and more active 
so profitability will rise. And you know and that just comes up from the fact that I can go on both sides and hedge and go against one versus the other and close out profits. And that's how I've done it. And that's what I did when, you know, back in the day where, you know, I was able to in under eight months or six months, uh, get over 300 and something percent of a return. Uh, now I would have loved to have the statistics of the raw market because I had larger amounts of people uh, in the marketplace. So the MNIPS didn't have any real ability other than to come at one point and launch prices around. But when the prices went up and down, like back in this period, here, let me show you. When the prices went up and down by ridiculous amounts, this was herd driven behavior. Now I was a seller up here and I was a buyer down towards the 6,000 range, uh, even over here towards uh, the low 8,000. And I was a buyer, seller, buyer, seller. And I did the same thing over and over and over and until I ultimately built a position that went all the way down to the 3,000 level and then sold it again as we went back up to the five and 6,000. And, um, and that's all I did is repeat this over and over. Now back here, because of the herd mentality and, and behavior, I was able to have gigantic ranges. Look at that. It goes up to almost 20,000, drops all the way back down to 6,000. And this did this in a relatively short period of time, right? From November all the way to February. So you had those so many, those few months there. And then, I mean, it was just freaking fantastic. And everything in here was logical because the MNIPS could not go over and um, control the, the order flow. Uh, it's called leading the price. This is what banks have done. I'll show you videos in the future of how they did it. And you know, you see them doing it live um, where they lead the price. And that's what the MNIPS are doing right now. But the MNIPS are having uh, a easier time because they don't have anybody to go against them. Over here, MNIPS got crushed. It got totally destroyed by the overall volume of the marketplace, so they weren't able to manipulate the price. It went to natural numbers, and I was able to clean up. Um, currently, with this, this has not been very logical, and it's been more um, difficult to get my order flow than I would normally have, but it's thawing out. I'm getting there, and um, it'll start to grow, and we'll start to go forward from there. But you'll see more and more of that. And also, I've started to account for the volume and their behavior. I'm tracking them, and I'm statistically going to uh, calculate what they're likely to do <laughs> in order to profit in the future. So it's become a game of uh, cat and mouse, and it's kind of deception because I even think a few of them follow me, but whatever. Uh, don't care. Um, I, I've got ideas on how to, to deal with them. And I'll do that in the future, and we'll keep uh, clicking in and clicking out and growing. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.